What if we redrafted every number one overall draft pick since 2000? What if every team got that pick exactly right? No busts, no whiffs, just the best players in that draft actually getting selected number one overall. In this video, we're gonna make that a reality. We're gonna give every team since 2000 a do-over if they need it and see who would have been the number one pick if the team picking from that spot had a crystal ball. For the sake of this video, we're gonna be looking at each year in a vacuum, meaning that the pick I make one year will not affect the draft order or the pick I make the year after. Obviously, if the Browns took Patrick Mahomes in 2017, they probably wouldn't have the number one pick in 2018, and if they did, they definitely wouldn't take another quarterback, but doing it that way would make things way too complicated, so we're just going to go year by year and determine who should have been the number one overall pick. And with that said, with the first pick in the 2000 NFL Draft, instead of Courtney Brown, the Cleveland Browns select... Tom Brady, obviously. Look, drafting in the NFL is hard. That should be clear based on the fact that literally every team in football passed on the greatest football player of all time. Even the team that eventually drafted Brady passed on him six times before finally taking him. Of course, every NFL team would go back and make this pick, knowing what we know now, but the Browns are the ones that get the honor. To say that Tom Brady would change the course of the Browns franchise is probably the understatement of the century. This pitiful team has been looking for an answer at quarterback for the better part of 30 years, so drafting a guy who could solve that problem for the next 20 would be a godsend. Now, does Tom Brady turn into Tom Brady if he goes to Cleveland instead of New England? Who knows, but he's a better bet than Tim Couch. And he's an even better bet than the guy the Browns actually took here, defensive end Courtney Brown, who only played six injury plague seasons before falling out of the league for good. Before we continue, guys, YouTube is not just the home of my random NFL content. It is also the new home of NFL Sunday Ticket, where you can watch your favorite team's out-of-market Sunday afternoon games exclusively on YouTube and YouTube TV. Maybe you're a Cowboys fan who doesn't live in Dallas and you want to see if it's finally your year. Maybe you're a Bucks fan who doesn't live in Tampa and wants to see if Baker Mayfield can fill the massive goat-sized hole left at the quarterback position. Or maybe you're a Chiefs fan who doesn't live in Kansas City and wants to see their defending Super Bowl champs in action. And if you sign up now, you'll get the lowest full season price for the year. Just click the link below to get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket. As a Patriots fan who lives in Denver now, this is how I'm going to keep tabs on my team and see if Bill O'Brien can really make a difference. And I'm sure relying on Bill O'Brien to turn things around won't be a complete disaster and only result in my pain and suffering. Only one way to find out, NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. With the first pick in the 2001 NFL Draft, instead of Michael Vick, the Atlanta Falcons select Drew Brees. Michael Vick was electric in Atlanta, and if it wasn't for the dogfighting that got him released by the Falcons and kept him out of the league for two years, I might have been tempted not to change this pick. But if you're looking for a guy who's going to be a really good quarterback for a really long time and not get in trouble, yeah, Drew Brees is your guy. Brees was drafted 32nd overall in this draft by the San Diego Chargers, but obviously he's more known for his time with the Saints, where he led the league in passing yards seven times more than any other player in NFL history. He's also a 13-time Pro Bowler, Super Bowl champion, and former Walter Payton Man of the Year. If you look up face of the franchise in the dictionary, Brees' picture would come up. And if the Falcons could go back and draft him, they'd be killing two birds with one stone because not only would they have their franchise quarterback for the next 20 years, they'd prevent him from ever getting to the division rival Saints. Michael Vick was a great player, a Madden icon, and someone I'm sure Falcons fans look back on fondly, but if they could trade out his career for Drew Brees's, they'd do it every time. With the first pick in the 2002 NFL Draft, instead of David Carr, the Houston Texans select Ed Reed. The problem in this draft wasn't that the Texans selected the wrong quarterback, it was that they selected a quarterback. This class just did not have anyone at the position worth investing in. Like, yeah, they could have gotten David Garrard or Josh McCown and been a little little better than they were with David Carr, but since we're drafting with the benefit of hindsight, I'm going to say they should go with the Hall of Fame safety instead. Ed Reed played with the Ravens for 11 years, made nine Pro Bowls, five All-Pro teams, won a Super Bowl, and holds several NFL records. The coolest of them, in my opinion, being that he's the only player in NFL history to score touchdowns via interception, fumble recovery, punt block, and punt return. Just a defensive menace, which should be obvious since, like I said, he's in the Hall of Fame. I'm sure the Texans would have much rather had Reed than a guy who has more career interceptions than touchdowns and who isn't even the best quarterback in his own family. With the first pick in the 2003 NFL draft, instead of Carson Palmer, the Cincinnati Bengals select Troy Polamalu. Just something about these Hall of Fame safeties. There were a few options here. I thought about going with Andre Johnson just to create one of the most lethal wide receiver duos of all time with him and Chad Johnson, but at the end of the day, that might just be window dressing when you have John Kitna at quarterback. I could have gone with the undrafted Tony Romo here, but while he did have a better career than Palmer, I think the best bet is for the Bengals to just get a superstar on the other side of the ball and try to find a higher upside quarterback later. So yeah, we're going with the eight-time Pro Bowler, four-time All-Pro, two-time Super Bowl champ, and the man that Pat McAfee sees in his nightmare. And again, the double whammy here, just like Drew Brees, the Bengals drafting Palomalu keeps him off the division rival Steelers. With the first pick in the 2004 NFL Draft, instead of Eli Manning, the San Diego Chargers select Larry Fitzgerald. A lot going on in this draft. First, we have Eli Manning getting drafted by the Chargers when A, he told them he didn't want to play for them, and B, in hindsight, gonna use that word a lot, the Chargers didn't need a quarterback. They already had Drew Brees on their roster. Ultimately, 
the Chargers traded Manning for Phillip Rivers on draft night, and Rivers backed up Breeze for two years before taking over for him in 2006. Now, why would they move on from Drew Breeze when he was coming off two really solid seasons as their quarterback? Well, Breeze needed surgery for his throwing shoulder after the 2005 season, and apparently that spooked the Chargers, because while they did offer him a contract, it had very little guaranteed money. So Breeze signed with the Saints, and the rest is history. Except it's not, because the entire point of this video is to live in an idealistic fairy tale land. So, giving the Chargers a mulligan in more ways than one, we're gonna have them keep Drew Brees, and instead of drafting a quarterback, we're gonna get Drew Brees a weapon in the form of Larry Fitzgerald. These two are gonna be Hall of Famers in 2026 because of their insane individual achievements, so I can't help but wonder what they could have done together. With the first pick in the 2005 NFL Draft, instead of Alex Smith, the San Francisco 49ers select Aaron Rodgers. So far, this is the only redo that actually had a realistic chance of happening at the time. Aaron Rodgers, a California native, actually believed he was gonna be the number one overall pick. Instead, San Francisco went with Alex Smith, who had a very respectable career, but nothing close to what Aaron Rodgers has done. Sometimes I feel like Rodgers and the 49ers were destined to be together, and because the 49ers went against what the universe wanted, it's just been punishing both parties. The 49ers haven't won a Super Bowl since 1994, and while Rodgers does have a Super Bowl, with his talent, we all thought he'd have more by now. Plus, one of the biggest reasons people point to for why Rodgers doesn't have more rings is a lack of weapons. You know, something the 49ers routinely have a shit ton of. I honestly believe if the Niners drafted Rodgers, we would have had like five to 10 Niners versus Patriots Super Bowls in the last 15 years. But uh, yeah, as a Patriots fan, I'm pretty glad that didn't happen. With the first pick in the 2006 NFL Draft, instead of Mario Williams, the Houston Texans select Jari Evans. Yeah, this one wasn't fun. This draft kind of stunk. Don't get me wrong, there were good players in this draft, just no obvious generational talents to put at number one. We had guys like Vernon Davis, Jay Cutler, Antonio Cromarty, D'Amico Ryans, Devin Hester, good Pro Bowl caliber players, but no one one or two guys that stand above the rest. That's why I'm just gonna help out the Texans O-line with four-time All-Pro guard Jari Evans. The Texans actually made the playoffs four times over the course of Evans' career and won a game in three of those appearances, so who knows how far they could have gone with some improved play on the offensive line. As for Williams, he had a nice career, but the Texans only made the playoffs once before he shipped off to Buffalo, so I'm sure they'd be happy to shake things up with a guy that could buy some more time for Matt Shaw. God knows he needed it. With the first pick in the 2007 NFL Draft, instead of Jamarcus Russell, the Oakland Raiders select Calvin Johnson. Folks, say hello to the biggest bust on this list and potentially the biggest bust in NFL history. Basically, Jamarcus Russell had zero work ethic. He was described as annually and incredibly overweight when he reported to camp and even had a life coach give up on him because he just didn't work hard enough. As the number one overall pick, he was released from the Raiders after just three years, which is unheard of. And to make matters worse, when you look back at the 2007 draft, the two players selected immediately after him, Hall of Famer Calvin Johnson and Hall of Famer Joe Thomas. Some other players taken in the top 15, Adrian Peterson, Patrick Willis, Marshawn Lynch, and a third Hall of Famer, Darrell Revis. But I'm gonna go with Calvin Johnson here because the most prolific receiver on this team in the late 2000s was tight end Zach Miller, and it would cover for the disastrous Darius Hayward Bay pick they would make a few years down the line. So here you go, Raiders, one of the best wide receivers of all time. Have fun wasting him just like the Lions did. With the first pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, instead of Jake Long, the Miami Dolphins select Matt Ryan. Jake Long wasn't a bad player. He was a one-time All-Pro and four-time Pro Bowler, but for the entirety of his career in Miami, the Dolphins were looking for a long-term solution at quarterback. Chad Pennington and Ryan Tannehill ended up being nothing but a huge waste of time. So enter Matt Ryan. Would drafting Ryan lead to a Super Bowl for the Dolphins? The AFC was loaded at the time. But if fellow 2008 draftee Joe Flacco was able to win a Super Bowl out of the AFC, I think the Dolphins would have had a shot. They just never had a steady quarterback to build the rest of their team around. Plus, this would all be worth it just to see Matt Ryan and Tom Brady face off twice a year. Hey, why was 19 afraid of 20? Because 28-3. With the first pick in the 2009 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions still select Matthew Stafford. Hey, our first pick that doesn't require a do-over because we're not taking the best quarterback in Lions franchise history away from them. Stafford finished his Lions career with 45,109 yards and 282 touchdowns. The next closest quarterback in those categories, Bobby Lane, who played from 1950 to 1958 and had 30,000 fewer yards than Stafford and less than half the touchdowns. Now I know, the Lions didn't win a Super Bowl with Stafford, so you could argue that they should just make a new pick here just to reshuffle the deck. But drafting Stafford revitalized a city and team that just went 0-16 and set them up for the success they're having today as one of the most exciting young teams in the NFL. The Lions would make this pick again 100 out of 100 times. With the first pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, instead of Sam Bradford, the St. Louis Rams select Trent Williams. This draft recap is a tough look for the Rams. You've got Sam Bradford at number one, and then the next seven picks were all Pro Bowlers. Bradford won Offensive Rookie of the Year, but beyond that, he just couldn't stay healthy, and there were no other viable quarterbacks in this draft unless you want to take a stab at Tim Tebow, Jimmy Clausen, or Colt McCoy. Instead, we're going to go with one of the best offensive tackles of all time and the best in the game today, Trent Williams. When in doubt, reinforce that offensive line. The guy is a 10-time Pro Bowler and two-time All-Pro, with those All-Pro selections coming in the last two years, so 
so he's only getting better with age. Putting this absolute apartment complex of a human being on the line would make life a lot easier for the various poor souls that ended up under center for the Rams in the years following. With the first pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers still select Cam Newton. Again, we're not taking the best quarterback in the history of this franchise away from this franchise. Cam Newton won an MVP in Carolina and made a Super Bowl, and while he didn't finish the job, that's exactly the kind of ceiling you're looking for when you draft a guy number one overall. There were plenty of other good players picked at the top of this draft. In fact, the first seven picks were all Pro Bowlers, and that doesn't include 11th overall pick J.J. Watt. But with all due respect to guys like Von Miller, A.J. Green, and Julio Jones, I'm fairly certain the Panthers aren't getting to a Super Bowl if they pick anyone other than Cam here. With the first pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, instead of Andrew Luck, the Indianapolis Colts select... Russell Wilson. This one just makes me sad. I love Andrew Luck. I think everyone does. So replacing him with a guy whose likability has taken a massive hit over the past year is a tough move to make. But to be fair, Russell Wilson's career is a lot more than just what he did with the Broncos in 2022. He was a consensus top five quarterback for several years and led the Seahawks to their first Super Bowl title. So we're not exactly forcing the Colts to settle here. But hear me out. Let's say we don't go with Wilson here. Let's say we don't go with a quarterback at all. Would it be completely insane to go with the undrafted Justin Tucker. We're talking about the best kicker in NFL history and an absolute weapon on the field. I'm just saying, if this quarterback class was a little bit weaker, I really don't think it's a bad pick. With the first pick in the 2013 NFL Draft, instead of Eric Fisher, the Kansas City Chiefs select Travis Kelsey. Wait, what? Yeah, this one's kind of weird because obviously the Chiefs ended up with Kelsey anyway, but the point is to retroactively make the best and most deserving player the number one overall pick, and that's what Kelsey is. Kelsey's on his way to becoming the greatest tight end of all time if he's not there already. Eight-time Pro Bowler, four-time All-Pro, and he's just always open. How is he always open? Kelsey's the ideal weapon for Patrick Mahomes and doesn't look like he's planning to slow down anytime soon. Meanwhile, Eric Fisher was the poster boy for what was an extremely let's just say underwhelming draft overall. Among the players selected near the top of this draft, Luke Jokel, Deion Jordan, Barkevius Mingo, Tavon Austin, EJ Manuel. Are you sufficiently nauseous yet? Can I stop? With the first pick in the 2014 NFL draft, instead of Jadevian Clowney, the Houston Texans select Aaron Donald. Clowney was solid in Houston, and at the very least, the Texans avoided the trio of landmines that got picked right after him and Greg Robinson, Blake Bortles, and Sammy Watkins. But it's safe to say he didn't live up to expectations. And he definitely didn't put up the numbers that number 13 overall pick Aaron Donald would have. Donald has more all-pro selections than Clowney had seasons in Houston. He's also a three-time defensive player of the year, nine-time pro bowler, and is considered a Hall of Fame lock. No doubt the Texans would have been better off with this genetic freak leading their defense rather than a guy who's still mostly known for that one hit he made in college. With the first pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, instead Instead of Jameis Winston, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Stephon Diggs. All the way from the fifth round to number one overall, Stephon Diggs has emerged as the most impactful player of this entire class. Jameis looked promising for a while, but he'll ultimately be remembered more for his 30-30 season than anything else. And there weren't any other quarterbacks worth taking instead of him. Sorry, Mariota. So let's add Stephon Diggs to a receiver room that already has Mike Evans and figure out the rest later. Yes, having those receivers with Mike Glennon at quarterback is basically the football version of the Bugatti in the trailer park. But hey, that's basically what the Vikings are doing with Jefferson at receiver and Kirk Cousins at quarterback. With the first pick in the 2006 16 NFL Draft, instead of Jared Goff, the St. Louis Rams select Dak Prescott. I really thought about keeping Goff as the pick here. After all, he has a Super Bowl appearance with the Rams and has definitely narrowed the gap between himself and Prescott over the last few years. But I still give Dak the edge here, especially pre-injury Dak, who would have been the one playing in that Super Bowl in Goff's place. I gotta believe if it was Dak under center, he would have led that offense to more than three points, just based on his mobility alone. There were also some great players at other positions in this draft. You've got Joey Bosa, Derek Henry, Jalen Ramsey, Chris Jones. But as we know, quarterback is king and the Rams needed one in a bad way. So we're gonna go with the 26. 16 Offensive Rookie of the Year. With the first pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, instead of Miles Garrett, the Cleveland Browns select Patrick Mahomes. I mean, duh. It really is unfortunate how many opportunities the Browns have had to solve their quarterback problem. And it's not really their fault. I mean, obviously they get a pass for the 2000 draft where Brady went 199th overall and they get a pass here because no one knew how good Mahomes was going to be. But it's got to be tough to keep having the number one pick and watch other teams land their franchise saviors year after year. This draft was no different and it's especially bittersweet because Miles Garrett is really, really good. Not a guy they regret picking at all. He's just not a quarterback. You know, the most important position on the field. With the first pick in the 2018 NFL draft, instead of Baker Mayfield, the Cleveland Browns select Josh Allen. Remember how I said earlier we're treating these years individually? Yeah, this is what I mean. Obviously, the Browns wouldn't take Josh Allen a year after taking Patrick Mahomes, but in a vacuum, this would be the pick. We've really got two options here, Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson, and I'm going Allen strictly based on durability. Both guys are dual threats, both are MVP caliber players, but Lamar has missed 10 games in the past two seasons while Allen hasn't missed any. This also sucks for Baker Mayfield because he did lead the Browns to their first playoff win in 26 years, but I trust that Josh Allen would accomplish the same thing and then some. So congrats, Cleveland. I've given you three franchise quarterbacks in one video only it was a reality. With the first pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, instead of Kyler Murray, the Arizona Cardinals select Nick Bosa. Former Cardinals general manager Steve Keim recently told the story about when he and Cliff Kingsbury met with Bosa prior to the draft. They went out to dinner, and as they were leaving, Bosa told them, I think you guys are probably going to end up taking that little quarterback. And if you do, Steve, I will haunt you for the rest of your career. Well, he was right. 
kind of, because Steve doesn't really have a career anymore. But still, the Cardinals would probably go back and take Bosa if given the chance. Kyler's career got off to an incredible start, but he's fizzled out since then thanks to injury issues, questions about his work ethic, and the fact that he may like Call of Duty more than football. And now we're at a point where the Cardinals may be set to move on from Kyler altogether. Meanwhile, Nick Bosa is the reigning defensive player of the year. So yeah, he'd probably be their guy. With the first pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, instead of Joe Burrow, the Cincinnati Bengals select, nah, I'm just kidding, it's still Joe Burrow. Burrow's first two full seasons in the NFL have ended in the Super Bowl and the AFC Championship game. Not bad. And the fact that he's still so clearly the first pick in a draft that was loaded with good quarterbacks like Jalen Hurts, Justin Herbert, and Tua should tell you everything you need to know. The guy's been a revelation. Simple as that. With the first pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars still select Trevor Lawrence. The prince who was promised got off to a rough start in his NFL career thanks to literally the worst coach in NFL history. But with Doug Peterson at the helm, Trevor looked like the guy we thought he'd be in 2022, a budding superstar who's capable of turning the Jags around. The rest of the quarterbacks in this class have been interesting, to say the least. Zach Wilson's a disaster. Trey Lance is a mystery. Justin Fields is good, I think. And Mac Jones had a good rookie year and then fell off. I feel very comfortable saying Trevor Lawrence will end up being the best quarterback from this class. So there's no reason to change this one up. And finally, with the first pick in the 2022 NFL Draft, instead of Trayvon Walker, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Sauce Gardner. This one's probably a little too early to call. We gotta wait and see how all these guys develop first. But if we're gonna do a redraft, I'd say the guy who won Defensive Rookie of the Year by a wide margin is a good bet. Sauce Gardner already looks like he's gonna be one of the league's top corners for years to come and is definitely someone the Jags would love to have around. Again, Trayvon Walker may turn into a great player in his own right, but if we're going off what we know right now, we gotta make like a drunk dude at Taco Bell. We're taking all the sauce. There you go, I fixed every number one overall draft pick for the last 23 years. If you take anything away from this video, it should be that drafting is hard. So let's see if this year's number one pick works out a little better than some of these other ones. And remember, YouTube and YouTube TV is the new home of NFL Sunday Ticket and you can get it for $100 off by using the link below. So be sure to check that out. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.